What's up guys, Tim Wilson from Tim Wilson UK here and welcome to another episode from the Golf Club 2. And today I'm going to be doing something that was requested of me a little while ago and that's um, what I would regard as hints, tips and tricks. So uh, the way that I play the game. Now, a little disclaimer early on in the video is that this may not work for everybody. Um, some of the calculations are, are pretty much spot on, you can use them, I mean they were used on the golf club one and they're used successfully on the golf club two so they're fairly straightforward but other things that I do that are specific to my style of play may may not work for you but um, it's it's how I play and somebody said to me you know how do you play you know what how do you do the calculations how do you work out where you want to play the shot all of this kind of stuff so that's what I'm going to try and do in this video whilst I'm actually playing around so let's have a quick look. I have no idea what course to play, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the suggested and see what's in there. If there's nothing in there, I may just do a... I mean, these are all pretty much the um, HP Studios courses and a few others. Let's see what's in Friends Played and we'll have a look at what uh, what other people have been playing lately. Moose Lake... Maybury Falls, there's quite a few here that there haven't been any plays on, but that doesn't mean to say that they are rubbish courses. Let's just see if we can find one that's that's had a few plays. Brookside Village Golf Club, Texas State Dad. Reachable Falls, I've played that one. Cranberry Golf Club, I haven't played that one, but I've seen that uh, early 1981 has recently posted... A video online on that course. Dunes del Pine Tour. That one looks quite nice as well. Let's go for this one. I don't know anything about this. Firm fairways, greens normal, fast. Okay, before we do this, what I think is important is for, you, for me to show you guys what I've actually got in the bag. So let's just remember that Corozal because I'm going to come back to that. So let me show you what I've actually got in the bag because I think it's important to actually do that up front so you know when I'm talking about certain clubs what I'm allowing for roll and what I expect the ball to do when using a particular club when it actually lands on the green. So let's just wait for this to load up and then I'll just talk you through what I've got in the bag. Um, I have quite a different club set to other people because I only carry a driver and a three wood. So if you have a look in the top right hand corner there, you can see that I have a driver and I have a three wood. I am playing on the tour club, so driver 279, three wood 255. Uh, I do have a little bit of a gap there between the three wood and the two iron, but what you can do is you could either loft up the three wood or you can add some extra onto the two iron to bridge that gap and you do get a lot of roll with the two iron so it tends to work well for me i don't have a five wood i don't have any of the hybrids in the bag i prefer to have a lot more of the shorter clubs in the bag so if we come down we've got two iron four iron i've got no three iron um five six seven eight nine those are your standards and then you'll notice i have four wedges so pitching wedge gap wedge sand wedge lob wedge and then i have the flat stick in there as well but if you have a look at the um the wedges you've got 130 115 185 so there's 15 yards between each of those so 130 to 115, 115 to 100, and 100 to 85. So it gives you a nice spread. And when you get round the green and you're using pitch shots as well, and chip shots, they come in very, very handy. And I find that round the green is where I want to try and be stronger than off the tee, you know, when you're using the long club. So that's just what's in my bag. Uh, let's just go back to that a minute because I just want to show you, with regards to calculations you'll hear me talking about three yards roll I allow for three yards roll so what that means is that when you're coming into a green and the reason I came back out to the golf bag was because I was looking at the the firmness of the fairways and the firmness of the, the greens is that when you're playing your approach shot to the green if you're using a long iron like a two iron or you're even coming in with I mean a six iron is not considered a long iron but anything from any of these clubs, driver, three wood, two iron, four iron, 
five iron, six iron is probably the last one that I would allow three yards for roll. So I always add on three yards to the distance. Sorry, that's not strictly true. I always subtract three yards for roll. So in other words, if it's 150 yards to the flag, I will calculate my club selection based on 147 yards, not taking into account any change in elevation. So that just gives you a little bit of insight into that. Let's, uh, let's go back to that course. Uh, play, and that was under friends played, and I think it was on screen number two. Let's have a quick look. Corazal Nacional. I don't know whether this is a Spanish course or not entirely sure whether this is real or fictional, but there we go. Par 71, holes 18, 6,265 yards. Not sure what we've got in the line along the lines of tees and um, pin settings, but we'll see that in a minute. Fairways firm, greens normal, green speed fast. So what that tells me is we're going to get a nice, nice lot of run on the fairways. The greens are going to be receptive to the approach shots, which means that when you're coming in, even though you may be coming in with a long iron, you're, you're going to get less roll than you would do if the greens were firm. But when we come to putting, the green speed is fast. So let's go to new round and then we'll have a look at tee boxes. Okay, so the blue tees are playing long. 7,000, almost 7,500 yards. We always like to play the blue, sorry, we always like to play the longest tees. And uh, we'll leave it on pin set one for the purposes of this exercise and we'll begin the round so the other thing that was requested of me as well is how I actually use the controller how I swing the club that one's going to be a little bit more difficult logistically to set up because I've got to try and set up a camera that's looking down on the top of the controller when I'm swinging so that may take me a little a little bit longer to set up but it's definitely something that I want to do because a lot of people have asked and there are so many different ways to swing the club you know you can choose the right or the left stick um, I mean, I choose the left stick and I'm right-handed, but I'll go into more detail on that when I'm actually playing the game or when I'm actually doing that video. So the important things when I'm standing on the tee box here on a par four, the first thing that I always look at is where it's, where it's showing I'm going to be landing this ball. So it's showing I'm going to be landing this ball around about there. Okay, now that doesn't take into consideration any wind. We have four mile an hour wind from sort of over our left shoulder if we're looking down the fairway. Uh, drop to three mile an hour wind, not gonna make an awful lot of difference, but the, 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 the driver actually does go a lot further than 279. The other thing that you need to take into consideration are things like the slopes on the fairway. So when you're looking at this, if you land this ball here, there, you're gonna get a kick to the right and the ball, it may end up in this rough here or it may just drift down into this little hollow. So you need to take those things into consideration. If you go left, what you'll, you'll see will happen is the ball will drift down into this hollow. May not run out into the rough because it actually goes uphill there. So I probably wanna be aiming this ball, see the wind's completely dropped away now. I'm actually gonna aim this ball and it's important to do this exercise because this is going to influence how your second shot on a par four is played. A little bit fast there, so that's going to go off to the left. So you can't account for anything like that, but it's going to give it's going to give you guys a good view on how I actually work out a shot from the rough now. So that went 294 because that went straight into the rough. Not a great shot. So. The very first thing you want to look at here, obviously you look at distance, but then you look in the top right hand corner and you can see where you have heavy rough. So it says 78 to 87. So if we look at a club that is 155 yards, there is a band that you could possibly fall between. So 78% of 155, which is almost three quarters, up to 87% of 155 yards. So we need to take that into consideration. Now, it's also uphill. Slightly uphill. Now the calculation for elevation change is 
one yard for every three feet. So in this case, we would add an extra two yards to the distance. So we are working out at 152 yards. But because we are in the rough, I tend to play a lot by feel. So I would probably go up to this 168 club. So I'm almost allowing 170 yards just because I'm in this heavy rough. And there's no guarantees how this is going to come out because as I've shown you, we have a, a band between 76 and 86. So if it comes out well, we could hit 86% of 168. If it comes out poorly, we're going to hit 76% or anywhere in between. So let's play this shot. I was talking about roll earlier and I took no roll into consideration at all there purely because of the fact that we were in the rough and it was all dependent on when we actually whether we actually got it on the green so I didn't quite have enough juice there to get on the green we're in the light rough we've got 15 yards so there are two ways you can actually play this shot you can play it with the chip shot as it's given us the club there for the chip shot a lob wedge <coughs> using a chip shot will go 12 yards of carry. So that's carry. So that is from where you hit the ball, that it goes into the air, that it lands on the green. That point at which it lands on the green, that is the carry. So 12 yards of carry, what you then have to allow for is the roll. So if it's uphill, it is slightly uphill, so we're not gonna make any changes to the elevation here. But what I'm gonna do is we do have a little bit of a an uphill lie you can see those beads running towards us and a red line so it is actually quite steep and that's going to take a little bit of distance off the club not an awful lot I'm going to add a little bit more loft onto this just to try and get it to check up and then roll a little bit further towards the flag I'm not sure how this is going to come out but let's see how we get on the other way that you can play this is using a flop shot but bear in mind if you have the shortest wedge in the bag the shortest flop shot distance is 25 yards so you'd need to take some off of that you'd need to add some extra loft onto that club all right let's go for this so there we go you can see that it there we go that was the that was the, pretty much the perfect result there but you're playing a shot you add a little bit of loft so what it did is it carried on to the green it bit a little bit, but then it rolled out and it continued to roll up to the flag. Uh, so we end up with a birdie. So two really poor shots, one off the tee and one the approach shot. We didn't hit the green in the regulation, but we managed to chip in for the birdie on the first hole. All right, let's have a look at the second one. Second one is a par three. Now, unless it's a short par three, 120, 130, 140 yards, you're gonna be coming in with a fairly long iron. So we've got a four iron. All right, so the first thing, We've got no wind here, so I don't have to talk about wind calculations, so we completely take that out of the equation. So let's do the calculations for roll. So we have to allow for roll. The, difficult, the difficulty in this hole is this bank here, because with that pin position where it is, coming in with a long iron means that ball's gonna come in hot. If you try and aim here, that ball's just gonna do that, and it's gonna end up somewhere down here. So what we're going to have to do is aim about here and hopefully the ball's going to bounce on. I mean, it may even be worth coming up this way and allowing this slope to bring the ball round to the hole. So there are a number of ways we can play this, but let's do the calculation for a start. Three yards of roll, let's take that off. So we've got 209. We've then got 22 feet, so we divide that by three and that's seven yards. So... 209 for the roll, take the seven yards off, we've got 202 yards. Now the club I've got in my hand is a four iron at 205 yards. So there's a couple of ways we can play this. We can add some loft to this club, which takes some distance off. Or what you could do is you could drop it down to the, um, to the five iron and you could add a little bit extra on there. What you could also do is because these greens are they're rolling fast so the green the green speed is fast you could allow or you could rely on 
that fire iron actually making it there but you run the risk of coming up way short and not actually getting on the green so I'm going to go back to the four iron I'm going to take a little bit off of it and then I'm going to try what I said I might try I'm going to try and come in a little bit shorter what I'm hoping is that I'm not going to end up running up that slope I want to use that slope and bring the balls round to the right so it ends up near the flag. So this is all dependent on whether I actually hit the ball well. So let's see what happens. It's straight, it's a perfect perfect. Let's see what happens here now. All right, so it's working out all right so far. Now we want it to use the slope and it, because the greens are normal, you see that did check out quite nicely, but the idea was there. Right, 23 feet, one inch uphill and slope from left to right. Now I don't really have an awful lot of guidance to give you guys on putting. Um, <clears throat> Other than somebody was telling me about for every, you can work out something along the lines for every inch uphill you add an extra foot. But um, yeah, I, my putting is completely done by feel and that's probably why I don't convert as many putts as what I should do. But I like to try and get them as close to the flag on the approach shot so I don't have to worry too much about the putting. The way I look at it is if it drops in for a birdie that's a bonus. But if I leave it close enough for a par, that's the aim of the game. All right, so let's see if we can get this close. Now, I know these green speeds are quite fast. Then you can see top right-hand corner. Um, <clears throat> 187 is the fastest green speed. This is 175, so it's not the fastest, but it is still fairly fast. It is uphill, so this is the good thing here. Um, 23 feet, one inch uphill, but the game recalculates based on the fact that it's uphill so it's actually put the marker at 26 feet I never look at the marker other than for the distance people will chastise me for that uh, sorry not for the distance but for the direction people will chastise me for that because they say that there is a better way to putt and this is what I said in the beginning of the video this is the way that I do it there may very well be a better way to putt but I'm sure somebody else would gladly create a video to let you can let you guys know how what that is. If you want to put the flag in, if you can't see the hole very well, just press the square button. <coughs> drops the flag into the hole, and then we're just going to try and roll this up. Now I tend to go. That's about 10 feet. There. 20 feet. About there. All right. So this is all feel, and this is having played the game on early access on PC <coughs> and the Golf Club One on PS4. And now the Golf Club 2 on PS4, this has just come with practice. I do tend to get it wrong every now and again. But that's what I was talking about earlier. If I don't manage to get the birdie, it's leaving it within two or three feet. So you have that little tap in and you can walk away with a par. All right, we're, two, we're through two holes. Let's try and speed this up a little bit. I'm conscious of the fact that this is uh, <clears throat> this could end up being a long video. All right, we have hole number three, a par five. So the important thing here is to look at the yardage. It says 612 yards in the top right-hand corner. Now that is the full yardage if you were to follow the fairway all the way around. As the crow flies, it's 550 yards. So the important thing here is to make sure this lands in the fairway. So there's this big area of fairway just here this big landing zone just there we want to try and get it in there and then we'll reassess whether we can go for the green in two i feel that we probably can but let's see that's a better strike than that first tee shot that i played on hole number one Right, so we've hit that big landing area and it looks like we're going to have a fairly flat lie for the second as well. So 311 yards, got a nice kick forward. All right, so what it's going to do is it's going to give you a club as if you were going back down the fairway. But what we want to do is we want to have a quick nosy over here. All right, 263 yards to the flag. Now, the longest 
club I can hit off the deck is 255. And I think that's probably going to be enough for me to get there. So let's have a look at two things here. What's the lie like? Now you can see that the beads are moving from left to right. So that suggests that the ball's below my feet. So what that means is that there's not an awful lot of movement on those beads and it's, it's still green, it's not yellow or red, so there's going to be a little bit of movement but not a lot. What that means is that the ball, if I was to hit this straight, the ball is going to go to the right hand side. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to slightly allow for that. Now there's not an awful lot we need to do, so I'm just going to pull it over here to the left hand side a little bit. One mile an hour wind, two mile an hour wind now, not going to make an awful lot of difference. In fact, I may even go closer to the flag than that. Let's go there. 263 yards, four feet uphill. So it's working at three yards for the roll, 260 yards, one foot uphill, 261. We've got 255, but a wood's gonna come in hotter than normal. So I'm gonna put a bit of loft in this just to try and get it right up in the air and land softly on the green. So let's see how this works out. I've hit it nicely. Has it got the legs? It has got the legs. And here you can see we need a good bounce. And there's your three yards of roll. A little bit more probably. And that's a smidge too long. So that allowed that, that loft made it land a little bit softly. Now, once more, we played a shot on the first hole which was out of the rough. Now you can see if I look at this, it says we're on the green fringe 99 to 100%. So you can play this one of two ways. The way to look at this is we have a chip shot. Seven yards, we've got 12 yards of carry, so it means that you need to calculate sort of somewhere in between there and allow it to roll down. The downside to that is you can see that the beads on the green are rolling away from us. So it's going to be downhill. So you can either play a chip shot and what you'll need to do is you'll need to do some calculation. That is gonna give you 12 yards of carry. So you need to do something along the lines of that to get seven yards, maybe even less, five yards. Somewhere around there, just to get it to roll up. The other alternative is this, get the putter out. All right, and this is what I would do. Seven yards, seven yards, equate, one yard equates to three feet, so seven yards equates to 21 feet. So we've got a 21 foot putt, and it's two inches downhill. You can see the little red marker there is showing us two inches downhill. Little bit of left to right, so let's put that on there. And I'm just gonna putt this because I am literally, if we, over, if we, if we pull this up here and then we zoom in, I'm literally just on the fringe. So the first two centimeters, I'm gonna be out of the fringe and I'm gonna be on the green. All right, it is downhill, so I need to be a little bit careful with that. We don't wanna be hitting this too hard. So once more, that's about 10 feet. That's about 20 feet. Don't wanna be hitting it too hard. And just like we had on the first hole, we've managed to get that in. So that just show, goes to show that what you can do is you can chip from off the green and it can roll up nicely, or you can putt if you're in the fringe and you can roll up nicely to the flag. And that was for an eagle. So I don't think we're gonna be playing a full 18 holes here, guys. What I think I'll do is I'll play a couple more holes and hopefully that will give you an indication of my mindset when I play. And when I do my normal videos where I'm doing a course playthrough, I am talking this through, and I very often do it quite vocally, but in this video, I'm actually explaining what I'm doing. I actually like this course, so <laughs> I, I do wanna play some more on this. So it's given me the two iron, uh, and it's probably given me a two iron for a reason, is because the creator has probably put his first marker there, because that is uh, his waypoint marker when he's creating the course. This is a par four, <clears throat> excuse me let's see where the driver is going to leave us because it's 303 to the flag I think that we could use the driver I've got to be a little bit careful that make sure we land in this big area of fairway just here but then we want to leave ourselves a either a chip or a pitch onto the green so because that let's just move that in again because that is yeah that's slightly risen 
I'm going to put it, I'm going to aim here and it's going to bounce and it's going to move off to the right. So let's see if that, all best laid plans, let's see if that works out. We have to hit it straight once more. Perfect shot. Got the driver out. And right smack bang where we said it was going to be and it bounced off to the right just like we thought we in fact if you'd have gone further left it may have actually kicked onto the green but i'm not too displeased with that all right so we've got another opportunity here to show you a couple of different shots so what i could do standard kind of play from here is to use the chip shot it's given me the sand wedge this time which is 16 yards you could pretty much play a full sand wedge and let it roll those four yards up so remember 16 yards is the carry and then it's going to roll out thereafter let's have a look at the lie because that's going to be the important thing so 16 yards is going to land you about there You'll notice that the beads are coming towards us, so the rollout isn't going to be as much as it was be, would be if it was rolling away from us. Now, it's rolling towards us to start with, but what you have to pay attention is that when it reaches the flag, you notice the beads are then rolling away. So you have to take that into consideration. So what you would do on the chip shot here is probably add a little bit of loft. The lie's not going to make too much of a difference on these chip shots. A little bit of loft a little bit left because you'll notice that the beads are flowing from left to right so you need to allow for that so you can play the chip shot the other shot that you could play is a flop shot now it's 20 yards two feet elevation almost three so that's 21 yards so you could play a flop shot so what you could do is you could take 25 yards add some extra loft so in other words you're opening up the club face and you could play the shot that way the downside to using flop shots in the golf club too is that there is a very, very small margin for error, all right? If you hit it slightly fast, you end up with a very fast. And then the ball, it's effectively like when you're playing real golf, like thinning the ball, or I call it hitting it in the teeth. So in other words, the blade of the club face is hitting the ball halfway up the ball and it zings it straight across the green okay <clears throat> so there is very very little margin for error on the flop shot so i'm going to drop this back down to the chip shot put it up onto the sand wedge add some extra loft just to try and get it to check up a little bit i'm going to move it over a little and let's see how we get on here i'm not entirely sure whether i'm going to take a full swing but let's see Didn't quite take a full swing, but and I probably should have because that's going to be the difference between a two foot putt and a 13 foot putt. So it's not too bad because I was almost on the green in one. Let's drop that flag into the hole. Slightly downhill this one. Not a lot of movement. It's just coming off the left hand side. So let's see if we can dribble this up to the hole. And that's in for the birdie. All right, that's hole number four. Let's jump on to hole number five. I think what I'll do is I'll play out the front nine, guys, for this video, because I'm conscious because I'm talking whilst I'm playing and doing these explanations that it is taking a little bit longer. All right, so let's have a look at this. 473 yard par four, 20 feet uphill. Completely irrelevant at this point. That will only come into play when we're playing our approach shot to the green. So you can pretty much ignore that. The other thing that you might want to consider when playing a par four and also playing a par five is where you put the ball on the fairway in relation to where the flag is on the green. Now, some people might think, well, why would you want to do that? Because you want to give yourself the largest amount of green between the front of the green and the pin. So that gives you the best angle on the flag, if that makes sense. So in other words, you not got you haven't got an awful lot of choice in this case because you're going to have to come in from that angle anyway because we are going to be somewhere back here probably around about here and we're going to be coming in oh excuse me over that bunker so 
we we only have one angle here but you do need to take that into consideration when you're sta standing on the tee boxes to the angle if there are different angles that you could potentially come into the flag from if you can eliminate coming in over water especially if the pin is tucked right in front of the green then that's a good idea but hopefully we'll have a couple more holes later on in this front line where i can try and illustrate that but in this case we're going to try and put this smack bang in the middle of the fairway a little bit fast on the backswing doesn't rate, make too much of a difference <clears throat> i pulled it a little bit but the fairway is nice and wide here now looking at this and where i've landed it's probably not a bad spot because if you're on the right hand side of the fairway let's have a look Ooh, maybe the slope's going to give me a bit of a headache but if you're on the right hand side of the fairway you're going to be coming in over that bunker unless you're right mm, unless you're coming in from that kind of angle there but we're going to be coming in from this angle so it almost takes that bunker out of play the only downside to this is whoops changed clubs by accident um, is this this is horrible this is really really horrible so we have the ball above our feet as you can see the beads are running from right to left so that suggests that the ball is up our feet it's uh, above our feet the grid lines are red which means that it's steep and also the beads are running towards us which means that the the ball is on a an, an uphill lie so we need to give it some extra so what i'm going to have to do for a start is move this over to here to allow for this slope so what that's going to do is that's going to allow the slope to push the ball from right to left all right the next thing we need to do we've got a six iron don't think that's going to be it might be enough club let's have a look in a minute but let's work out the yardage 181 yards three yards for roll all right so that gives us 178 but then it's 24 feet uphill so um three three feet for every yard so we need to add extra eight yards onto that so 178 plus 8 186 wind is slightly behind i'm going to leave this as the 170 oh am i no i'm going to change it to the 192 because we've got this uh we're playing uphill i'm going to take a little bit off of it not sure how this is going to work out this is a tricky shot I pushed it a little. I don't know whether that slope's really going to have an effect on this. And it's going to roll out. All right, so I did push it a little and that affected it. So all these calculations and all of these things that I'm telling you guys about are all based on whether you can actually hit the ball straight. So that you have to really, really get that right first. And you can see I didn't get that right there. But you have to, you have to get the calculations right because if you do hit it sweet, as you can see from some of my previous shots, it does pay off. All right, so we're gonna use the 12 yard carry club. I'm gonna add some loft to get this ball to check up. Gonna pop it to the right a little bit and then I'm not gonna hit it a full 12 yards. That's 12 yards. I always like to gauge where it is. 12 yards is there. So we wanna be going about there, there. And we want less than 10 yards because we wanna allow for some carry. Sorry, we wanna allow for some roll. There we go. Couldn't have wished for better than that. That is pretty much, other than getting it in the hole, that's pretty much a spot-on chip shot. So that's in for par. Hole number five, done and dusted. Hole number six, we've got another par four. Got a good spread on this front nine. We've got a par four here. I think we've, that follows up with a par five. 279, really narrow fairway on this par four. And this is a good indication this is this is exactly what i'm talking about so if you were to land it here all right let's zoom back out that would mean that you would be playing towards the green over those two bunkers so going into the green there you can see those two bunkers let's move out again on the other hand if you were to play here and let's spin that around now See, you're playing over a lot less bunkers. You are still playing over bunkers, but that is the difference between being one side of the fairway to the other. So once more, this does rely on you hitting a good shot. 
let's put it there. What you do tend to do if you start being a little bit particular about where you put it in the fairway, you do run the risk of running out of fairway, which I may do here. So try to take on too much, and that is exactly what I'm talking about. So even though it's gone 303 yards, and we have the perfect angle on the flag, we're only literally just coming over, and we have, sorry, we have more more green to work with. So in other words, if we were coming in from a shallower angle like that, look how much green you've got to work with, not a lot. We're coming in from this angle, you've got more green to work with. But I'm in the rough now, so 80 to 91%. So that makes the, that makes the shot harder. 173 yards, let's take three yards off for the roll. 170 yards, 13 feet, that equates to four yards. So we're back to 174 yards. 80 to 91%. I'm going to be playing the five iron because I just think that this is going to come out badly. And when you're in the heavy rough, it's all about just getting it on the green. I don't think you can be too picky about where it lands. Get a good bounce. Not quite there. See, I did club up. If I'd have left that at the initial selection, I wouldn't have been anywhere near the green. All right, so this is just about getting it nice and close. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Let's have a look at the lie. I'm not gonna to play too much of a part in these chip shots. The lie doesn't really have that much of an effect. Elevation, one foot, let's just forget about that. Move it a little bit to the left in case it comes up short because you can see that it does roll from left to right. Let's add some loft onto this to get it to check up. And we want nine feet on this one. So we had 10 on the previous one. We want, sorry, we want nine yards. We had 10 yards on the previous one. So let's see if we can play a similar one to the last hole. And it should release a little bit. I put a little bit more loft on that so it didn't release as much, but that's gonna leave me within three or four feet. Slight slope from the left, so I'm gonna put it on the left edge of the hole. And we tap that in for a par. So we've yet to drop a shot, and it's all about being consistent. I say this time and time again when I'm playing my videos, or when I'm playing my rounds and I'm recording them for YouTube. All I try and shoot is bogey-free rounds. That is my main aim when I'm playing the game. Any birdies, eagles, whatever whatever else comes is an absolute bonus. I will have to come back and play a full 18 on this course and I'll probably do a video on it because this is a really, really nice course. It's playing really nicely. I'd be interested to know whether this is a real course because it, it strikes me, it, it's laid out like very much like a real course. One maybe on the Costa del Sol or something along those lines. So if anybody knows, then please let me know. Uh, 279 it's a par 5 once more let's have a look at this let's have a look where the flag is we want to try and be as far left as possible but it's going to be difficult because the person that's created this has put a little bank here so if you land left the ball's going to squirt to the right but let's put it on the left anyway Let's drop it down. We don't want to be there. It's going to kick to the right. Let's try and let's try there. Don't want it to be in the rough. I've hit it nice and straight. That's a start. I need a good kick to the right now. So this should kick to the right. Yeah, see that? Kick to the right. And you do have to look at those things. You do have to take those things into consideration. And we're going to have a... I can tell you what this lie is going to be. We're going to be on an uphill slope and the ball's above my feet. That's actually showing a downhill slope. It's fairly flat, to be honest. Though. It's not really going to make that much of a difference. Let's work out the yardage. Three yards for the roll. 250 yards. 18 feet equates to six yards. So 256 at the club in my hands guys 255 three wood bang on the money but that's going to come in too hot it's going to come in much too hot 
So let's add as much loft onto this club as we can. Try and get it coming in soft. I still think it's going to come in too hot. But let's see if we can get it on the green. Pushed, uh, sorry, pulled it a little bit. I think we've got enough green to play with that it'll stay on. Yeah, it's going to be on the green, but it's going to be a little little further away than I wanted it to. 259, 260. So probably seven yards more than I wanted it to be. If I'd have hit it straight, could it have been closer? Potentially, but we will never know. 39 feet, <clears throat> a long way away. Let's pop the flag in there just so in case we move it. Now, this is a, an interesting putt because you'll notice that it's going quite sharply from left to right here. You can see it moving from left to right. Whoops, let's not move that. From left to right, okay? And then when we get closer to the hole, it's moving from right to left. So in these instances, what I normally do is I look at the speed of the beads. The initial slope is moving a lot faster than later on but you tend to hit through the slope in the early part of the putt because the ball is going the fastest. It tends to turn the most when it's slowing down. So I'm going to hit this ball relatively straight. 39 feet, this is the challenge. It's not so much the slope, it's the distance. All right, so I'm going to go about here. Let's see if this works out. should start moving back to the left is way too fast and as you can see I don't get it right all the time that was 50 feet it was only two inches downhill but that really caught me out so moving from left to right not a great deal 12 inches it is that sorry 12 feet three inches downhill so slightly downhill I'm just putting it on the left hand side of the cup I just want to trickle this down towards the flag and it grabs it in and we end up with a birdie. It is a par five. So that's five under par. We have another par four coming up, which is great because we're going to end with a par four and then a par three to finish the front nine. Two, seven, nine. Let's see. This, this hole is not going to give us too many challenges. Now, let's have a look at the green because this is the interesting bit on where you want the ball to lie. So if you land the ball here... All right, you're going to be playing. Let's zoom into the green. Oh, I'm getting this all wrong. I think no matter where we're going to come into this flag, we're going to have a very, very tight angle because if you come in from this side, it's going to be tight. If you come in from this side, it's a little better, but not a great deal. But it's always interesting to take those things into consideration when you are playing, just so you are thinking a little bit more ahead of where you're playing. I've pulled that. Now that could be in the rough. I'm hoping the slope's going to bring it round, but let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So you can see the angle I've got on the flag now. Camera swings round. All right. The good thing with this is that it's 148 yards. We are going to be coming in quite with a, with a very lofted club. Uh, it's given us a nine iron, so we don't allow for any roll on this shot. All right, let's have a quick look. We don't want to be short because you can see it rolls all the way back down the hill. So we don't want to be short. 148 yards, no roll. Let's forget the roll now because we're on a nine iron. 14 feet up so that's going to give five yards of elevation change so we want 153 yards so let's change to the 155 club once more we don't have to account for roll let's take a little off this all right because it's 153 not 155 and i am going to pull it very slightly to the left and the reason being is we have a three mile an hour wind and the ball is slightly below my feet. Let's see how this plays out. As always, we have to rely on the fact that we're going to be hitting a straight shot. So that's a perfect, perfect. I did pull it ever so slightly. 
and I did come up short, so I did exactly what I didn't want to do. And you can see the ball is now rolling back down that hill. So I came up a little short there. Nine yards. So not an awful lot to talk about on this one, other than we're just going to put it a little bit over to the right. Going to add some loft onto this just to get it to check up. That's 12. There we go, and that's going to leave it about four feet. Probably a little bit too much loft on that. That's five feet. Let's tap that in for the par, and then we're going to move on to the final hole, which is a par three. I say final hole, it's final one for this video, but I will come back and replay this course because I am thoroughly enjoying it. And it's a beautiful par three. Look at this, somebody's put some time and effort into this. So we've got the retaining walls all the way around the, the lake. 208 yards, playing 211. So let's work this out. Three yards for the roll, 208. Nine feet, so that's another three yards. 205, so we've got exactly the right club in our hands. Don't want to be right, because if you have a look here, we've got this slope, so that's going to pull the ball all the way down here. We want to be left. We want to be up here. All right, we do have a slight wind blowing, so let's, uh, let's use that. Let's take a little bit off of this, not an awful lot. And I've hit that nicely. It's straight. Could be very long though. Let's see if it gets a nice soft bounce. That's not too bad. That's going to be about 20, 25 feet probably. Let's have a look. 15 feet, so not as bad as I thought. It is downhill, so let's allow for this slope from right to left. Let's just trickle this, get it going. Don't want it rolling too far past the hole. So you can see I barely touched that. And that's gone in. I didn't actually see that, but that's gone in for the birdie. On that goat, oh sorry, on that goat. On that note, guys, I hope this was informative for those of you that wanted to uh, know how I play and what my thought process is when I'm actually playing around. I've only played nine holes here, but I wanted to keep the video relatively short i realized that it was probably i'm not sure how long it's been so far but i hope it was informative i hope it's helped somebody out i hope it's been able to um, add an extra element to some people's games to improve their game um, as i said it's not always going to fit everybody but i'm hoping that it gives you some insight into how i play guys if you enjoyed the video hit that like button drop some comments in the box below and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel hit the button in the bottom right hand corner but until next time guys take care see you soon bye now